Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. And happy Mother's Day to y'all. Whether you're a mother or not a mother, it doesn't matter. It's a happy Mother's Day, right? So glad to have you all out on this rainy day. Did you have you cross a lot of deep water? Nobody was able to cross deep water. George said as soon as this service is over, he's headed home. He wants to make sure he crosses that bridge. Before the water catches him. So David has a boat. I go over the boat there. As swift as that water is running, it's hard to tell where it'll end up. Might end up in the ocean. Uh, just a couple of announcements. No praise for Bible study tonight. Trustees will meet on Tuesday, and the morning Bible study is as scheduled. Praise team, 6.30 on Thursday night. Next Sunday is Friendship Sunday. Notice what it says. Try to fill a pew. Try to fill one. Don't fill the one that you're in because some of you are already somewhat full. So try to fill a pew. Get some people out here. Carry in luncheon. You ladies will we'll just, we'll just enjoy whatever it is you bring in. So, so uh, plan for that, will you? Let's have a good turnout for friendship. So, um, Linda Barr is here. And she will be sharing uh, this morning um, about PMI. And uh, we have baby bottles available today so uh, for this for this month so um, also uh, you can still sign up to sponsor me you know I know we've got two things going here for for PMI this uh, this month but uh, if you will uh, uh, maybe you know put a little here a little there it don't make any difference because it's all going there right so so be, uh, be sure to do that today. The, my sign-up sheet is back there, as well as the uh, waiver bottles. Uh, any other announcements this morning? I do want to say that uh, the uh, ladies are meeting the Monday before the week, right? You're meeting a week early, and on a Monday instead of a Tuesday, right? This thing, this month. So. So we'll we'll get that all in out there for you. Anything else this morning? Also remember we the new association is providing the table service and the drinks. The drink and the table service are provided for next Sunday. So anything else? Greet one another with the love of the Lord. <laughs> Shall we stay? Hey.
on TV this morning that came back to me, uh, Matthew 5, 6. Uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I looked in my other Bible that I have at home. To, I often compare my study Bible with an NIV that I have just to see the difference, which it was the same, but I noticed after it I had wrote, uh, blessed are those who crave God's ways. But my joy today is that I had missed the last part of that verse that for they shall be filled. 
And that's just another gift from God. So I praise the Lord for that. Who else this morning? I can't believe if you've got a mother here that you're not saying something about your mom. Or maybe that's a good thing. I <laughs>
us this morning? Because we know that you've told us in your word that with, with all of our intercessions, we give you thanks. Mm -hmm. And so we do. We thank you. Not because we understand everything. <coughs> Precisely because we don't understand everything, we just release our faith to you with thanksgiving that you still have everything under control. Yes. You still have a plan for every one of us. Father, we, we, we pray for the family that's in mourning. Father, that uh, I'm confident that they have found their relief in you. Mm -hmm. as, as they Jesus. have been your servants. Father, just bless that family in a special way. Father, just pour out your presence upon Ivan and Diane and Jane and Susie and, and Father, grant uh, the trucker a, a favor with the IRS as he goes through audit. Father, we thank you that we can release our trust in you. You've told us to just leave it at the cross because the cross, the blood of Jesus covers everything. Father, we lift up everyone on our prayer list that the power of your Holy Spirit will be with them, that you touch them. Father, we thank you that he can be there as, as easily as he is here. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Should any of them not have a relationship with you, that today would be their day, mm -hmm. that they would come to know Jesus personally. Father, we pray for our military personnel, especially those who are in harm's way today. Surround them with your love and grace. Put that hedge of protection around them. Father, we ask that if any of them not know, not have that relationship with you, that they would indeed come to that relationship through Jesus. Yes. Father, we pray for the leadership of this country, many of whom do not have a relationship with you, and that they too would turn their hearts to you and realize that you're the only one that can give us the kind of wisdom that not only will get us out of the struggles that we're going through as a nation, but will put us on the right path again. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, Israel needs to know their Messiah. Open their hearts, Father, to recognize that their Messiah is the Lord Jesus. Father, just to pour out your presence upon them. Father, we thank you for all of the, the Arab people, the Muslims who are coming to that personal relationship with you through Jesus. Thank you, Father, that their hearts are being opened. Father, may it happen more and more as time draws close. Father, so we just give you the praise. We give you the glory. And it's all because of Jesus, in whose name we pray the prayer he's taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our morning tithes.
for Jesus, and we'll give you the praise in His name. Amen. Come on down. What's that? He's a little cranky. Oh no, not on Mother's Day. Oh, are you teething? I see your teeth. Did you show them to me? No way, Jose. Hey, you look pretty this morning. But you knew that, didn't you? Huh? <coughs> didn't you? Mother's Day. That's what today is, right? Mother's Day. Yeah, come on over. Let's go over. <coughs> yeah. Oh. You're just going to stand there? There you go. Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a special day. And it could be Grandmother's Day just as easy, could it? Although there is a Grandmother's Day that very few people celebrate. But what's so special about Mother's Day? What? Yeah, so what's so special about that? <laughs> I think we've got a broken record up here. Yeah, because mothers gave us birth, right? And they surrounded us with their love and their encouragement, and their support. But not everybody has a good mother. Not everybody. And that's too bad. But that's not what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the good mothers. Right? Yeah. Good mothers. Jesus had a mother. Yeah. She was pretty good, too. She went through an awful lot with Jesus, didn't she? Yeah. And one thing that we find out is that even though Jesus was 33 years old when he died, Mary was right there. Right there with him. Because that's what mothers do. In the good times and the bad times. Mothers are there. And so for that reason, we give thanks for mothers. Right? Yeah. Did you do anything for your mother or your grandmother today? I guess not. <clears throat> oh, okay, okay. Well, your grandma will wait for it then. Yeah. Pray with me. Father, we give you thanks for mothers. We thank you for your love for us today. That's oftentimes shown to our mothers. We give you the praise of Jesus' name. Choice is number 47. God will take care.
share about pregnancy ministries. And of course, this is a time in which we do, from Mother's Day to Father's Day, you have the baby bottles that you're back there to fill. And so make sure that you get those on the way back. And if you haven't signed up to sponsor me for the walk, please do so back there as well. It's kind of interesting we put them all together. Uh, and and uh, at least here, a lot of people have have uh, February oftentimes is their month for the baby bottles. So, and uh, but I, I've always thought that Mother's Day to Father's Day just made sense to me to, uh, to raise funds for the Pregnancy Ministries Incorporated. So. Linda, it's all yours. Thank you for coming. All right. Um, well, I, I told them this morning that I forgot my notes, so we're winging it here. <laughs> but um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a phone call from a friend of mine, and she has a daughter. Um, her daughter is married. Uh, they've been married about three years, and they have a two-year-old little girl. And at that phone call, she said her daughter told her and started crying and said, I'm pregnant. Now, they are a very strong Christian young couple, love the Lord, but it was just not a convenient time for them. Her husband was just starting into a new career. They were kind of struggling financially and so forth. But she had the support of family and friends and her church. And so though it was inconvenient, she... And though it is not a good time and they're struggling, you know, she is carrying her child. But many of the women who come to PMI are not in that situation. If, when they find out that they're pregnant, uh, they don't have uh, the family support. They may not have um, the support of the father of the baby if they're not married. Uh, they may not have um, good financial structure. And they often do not have a church home and do not uh, have a trust and faith in the Lord. And so what we want to do is encourage them towards that mothering uh, because their thought in their mind might be that they are going to terminate the pregnancy. And so what we want to do is build up that high calling of motherhood and help them and support them, give them emotional, spiritual, and material support that they may need to carry their child. Uh, the mission of PMI says that we are there to provide, um, to uphold the sanctity of human life by providing Christ-centered assistance in the area of pregnancy and other related areas. And the reason why we do that, we have a biblical foundation and one of the strong biblical foundations is the value and the worth that God places on all human beings, including the unborn child. And so let me read uh, just a short passage from Psalm 139. In there, David says, for you, talking to God, for you, God, formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. So God... Um, shows the humanity of the unborn child in this. And, and you know, this is, um, I'm not sure which translation this is. King James. New King James. Um, and some of the other translations, it says, uh, you formed me in my mother's womb, you knit me together. And, and I really like that, um, that phrase there, you knit me together, because it makes me think of a loving grandmother very... Um, lovingly involved in knitting something for, you know, a grandchild or someone, and a beautiful picture of the uh, care that God gives in forming the unborn child. Well, Pregnancy Ministries has four centers, Chambersburg, Waynesboro, Shippensburg, and Greencastle. And some of the services that we provide at those centers, we have 
uh, a free pregnancy test, which is often the first uh, reason why a young woman may call us or come into the office wanting to know for sure if she is pregnant or needing some kind of proof. We do um, a lot of um, education on pregnancy, helping her to see how to have a healthy pregnancy and so forth. Um, with um, the pregnancy test, we couple that with uh, the offer of a free ultrasound confirmation to confirm that there is a viable uterine pregnancy. And that is often uh, what shows a young woman the reality of what's going on inside of her. Um, she will uh, come in, we do um, uh, the ultrasound to show her the reality of that. And we had one young woman who came in and she was kind of vacillating back and forth about whether she should uh, carry a child or not, or whether she should terminate her pregnancy. And her situation was such that um, the father of the baby did not want to be involved. He had some addiction problems. Um, she had to move back home from another state, back to Chambersburg. And so everything was up in the air with her. Her family was supportive of her, but she just didn't know. She was just struggling with that whole decision. But when she came to PMI and had her ultrasound, it showed that she had a 12-week baby at that point. And let me show you uh, right here. This is a 12-week baby. And I mean, most of you can see that this baby is fully formed. And here, she could see on the ultrasound screen this little baby moving around inside of her. And this solidified in her mind the reality of the unborn child within her, and she did decide to carry. And in fact, when she came down to make a follow-up appointment, she stood at the reception desk, and she put her hands on her belly, and she said, there's a little person in there. And so that reality became very clear to her. Um, some of the other things that we do, we have STI testing for chlamydia and gonorrhea and talking to them about healthy dating relationships. Uh, we have a program called Earn While You Learn. And in that program, the girls come in and they come to sessions and meet one-on-one -on -one with one of our client advocates. And at those sessions, they learn about healthy pregnancy, taking care of a baby, uh, taking care of you know a toddler and some of the issues that might come up with toddlers and they, as they go through these sessions and fill out the worksheets and there's homework they have to do the homework and bring it back and they get baby bucks and this is like monopoly money and we give those to them after each session and then they can use those baby bucks <coughs> to purchase things through our resource rooms so there's maternity clothing, baby clothing, diapers, wipes, um, furniture items even, anything that is donated that we have available, they're able to purchase them with baby bucks. So that helps them also uh, financially with things that they might need. We make a lot of different referrals also to other agencies based on what their needs are. Um, we also seek to work with the young dads and encourage them to come in uh, to the sessions also. A uh, couple of other things that we do, uh, we have a program called Restore, and this is an abortion recovery program because we know there are women out there who have had past abortions and may be struggling emotionally or spiritually with that. And so the director of that program can meet one-on-one -on -one with them and talk with them, or she can uh, have a group Bible study. It's an 11-week Bible study called Forgiven and Set Free that specifically is written for those who are post-abortive. Okay, we also have a lot of college outreach, especially at Chippensburg University, where they do things like they, they have display tables set up, you know, giving information about PMI and how we could help someone 
if they are um, unexpectedly pregnant and what resources we have available. Okay. We also provide education and talk with them about you know, the, the abortion issue, healthy dating, and so forth. So they do a lot of different things. They do things like cupcakes for life and hand out cupcakes. And they also do sidewalk chalking, which is drawing hearts on the sidewalk. And they seek to draw 3,000 hearts in one day to represent the 3,000 babies that are aborted every day in the United States. And that has been a real eye-opener for a lot of college students who come and want to know what they're doing, and they get to engage them then in conversation. Okay, I just have a couple of things that I'm going to show you here. That is how we honor our moms. First, we have what we call mommy bags, and these mommy bags are given to the girls when they're um, about six months along. They just have a lot of different things, anything that's donated. There might be brushes. There might be nice soaps, you know, this is some kind of a South of France pure gardenia soap. So a lot of little things just to honor them and say, hey, you're doing a great job, and to encourage them along. When they first come in, they get to choose a hat, a knit hat or baby booties, and on that is attached a coupon for a quilt, and they can choose a quilt from the basket either that day or any day up to a year afterwards. And this is a sample of one of the quilts that we have. I think I have it upside down. Anyway. <laughs> um, and then once the baby is born, they get a layette. And that layette is usually two great big shopping bags. This is like a quarter of what they get. Uh, two big shopping bags that has just about anything in there that is we call it our baby starter kit. So it has, it'll have onesies. It will have bibs. It will have knit or crocheted afghans that ladies have made for us. Uh, for sleepers. Um, baby towels. And cute little outfits. They adorable. And you can see that sometimes we have donated, or we actually have a whole rack of donated items that are brand new. So it's kind of a, a, a sampling of both new and used items. And there's a little boy's outfit. And there's diapers and wipes and you know, a lot of different little things, sometimes little books or something like that, whatever we have available. So just encouraging them and helping them along in their mothering. And so we just want to thank you for all of your help and for doing the baby bottles and for sponsoring Pastor Ken. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to share short story and if I'm going to share a short story you know you're going to miss lunch <laughs> after Easter and Christmas Mother's Day draws the highest attendance in most U.S. churches following Christmas and Easter a lot of mother's sermons focus on the prestige and the glory of being a mom. And while motherhood is worthy of incredible honor, not everyone can identify with this kind of message. Because some mothers, and some would-be mothers, have it very hard. And remember, too, that giving birth to a child is not what makes a person a real mother. There are plenty of biblical women who demonstrate the difficulties of motherhood in the Bible. And a mother can realize that that's the reality that most of us, most of you ladies face. Moms can identify with other mothers because of going through their own struggles. And there are struggles in motherhood. 
I know there are struggles in motherhood because my mother raised me. There are struggles. There are difficulties. There are life and death moments. Decisions that have to be made on the spur of the moment sometimes. And we're going to look at one of those mothers in crisis. Her name is Jochebed. How many of you know the name Jochebed? You will not forget it after today. Jochebed, the name Jochebed, it only appears in the Bible once, and it's in the book of Psalms. But it's about the woman whose story is in Exodus chapter 1 and 2. There were this, she was living in a very difficult and rough time. All of her people were in exile and they were slaves in Egypt. Added to everything else, the, the Isra Israelites were growing in numbers. And the Pharaoh was very concerned about that because there was power in numbers. And so he gathered all the midwives from the Israelite women and he brought them all in and he told them something that we've heard recently in this country. When the babies are born, especially the boys, as soon as they're born, kill them. And we've heard that here in just the last couple months. As soon as they're born, kill them. But strange things, the Israelites kept multiplying and kept growing. And so he called them back in again and he said, How come you're not killing them? He says, Oh, he says, the Israelite women are just so strong that they give birth before we ever get there. So the king, the Pharaoh, put out a decree. All male babies will be killed. And we heard that story with Mother Mary and Jesus. All male boys or all male babies are going to be killed. And so Jochebed had a problem. She was pregnant. Should she give birth to a boy, he would be killed. And sure enough, when she gave birth, it was a boy. And she looked at the boy and she found within that boy something very special. He was, he was just a very beautiful child, very, something very special about him. And now she was at the dilemma. She was at the point of what do I do? Do I go against the civil laws, the laws of the nation that I'm in? Do I go against them and try to somehow save my baby? Do I give him up? She chose to save him. And she hid him for three months. That in itself was quite an, quite an effort. To hide a baby for three months. I don't know about you, but my babies cried a lot. But she hid him for three months. Finally, it came to a point where she knew she could hide him no longer. So she made a basket, covered it with pitch, put the baby in it, took it down to the Nile River, put it in the bulrushes near where the princess of Egypt was, would bathe, sent her daughter to be with that baby to see what was happening. Sure enough, the princess came to bathe and when she heard the baby cry, she sent some servants over to find out what was going on. And she found the baby in this little ark. Brought it back to the Pharaoh's daughter. 
And the Pharaoh's daughter wanted to keep it for her own. And so happens that Miriam, of course, was there. And Miriam said, because Pharaoh's daughter didn't have any way to take care of it, to nurse it, she says, I know a Jewish woman who has the ability to continue to nurse that baby. So she gave it to Miriam, and Miriam took it to Mama Jochebed, and Mama Jochebed nursed it for five years. It wasn't unusual to nurse a baby back then for up to five years. Seems strange to us. But what was interesting was she had the baby for about five years, and she trained the baby for five years in the Jewish traditions. So that baby knew the Jewish traditions, and she knew that he knew he had the word read to him, or at least recited over him. So that would play a very important role 40 years later. Mother's love. Mother's love that protected the baby against all of the powers of be. Mother's love that protected the baby to the extent that was willing to surrender that baby so that the baby might live. Mother's love. Mother's love. And of course you know that baby was Moses. That baby, that very baby, and listen very carefully because every baby has this opportunity. That very baby saved a nation. And how many babies are aborted? It could have been our next. In fact, could have been, could be that person who discovers the cure for cancer. Every baby is special. There are no, listen carefully, there are no illegitimate babies. Only illegitimate parents. God has a plan for every baby, as Linda shared. It's not easy to be a mother. Personal hardships experienced by even the best of mothers that make it difficult to, even, difficult to even take care of themselves, let alone having the responsibilities and implications. Those decisions pertaining to their own children it can be overwhelming. The reality of being a mother is overwhelming. Listen, ladies, I want to share this with you. Those of you who are mothers, I don't understand how you did it. I don't understand it. But I appreciate it. And I thank God that I had a mother like that. But the reality is, is that many children don't have that possibility don't have that advantage of having a mother who loved like Jacobo. Decisions have to be made. No second guessing. Sometimes decisions are immediate. Whether they're right or wrong, they have to be done. And they do it to the best of their ability and understanding. Not all children are appreciated. It took me many years after I left home to know just how my parents got wiser and wiser as I got older and older. And the reality of how much my mother, who had four children, how much she had to invest of her life into us. You do the best you can. You love your children the best you can. And 
and listen to me carefully. That's all anyone can expect. I don't know about you, but I found out that no matter how old I got, I was still one of Mama's kids. I had the I had the, the fortune of not being the baby, so that uh, she wouldn't at least call me her baby. But she still called me her child. It didn't make any difference how old I became. I was still Mama's child. And it's so important for us to understand that no matter how you grow, how old you become, to your mama, you're still a child. And to us, she's still mama. That's that. That's that. And I'm so glad. Pray with me. Father God, thank you for our mothers. Thank you for the story of Jochebed. Thank you, Father, for the, for the realization of just how important babies are and babies can be. Just how important, Father, it is for us to give our children the best possible upbringing we can, but knowing full well that even in our failures, your love doesn't change, and neither does Mama's. Father, thank you today for all that you've done for us because of our mothers. Father, bless us with that realization that not only are we yours, but we are Mama's. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Elaine chose number 309. <coughs>
let us go and share the good news of Jesus with others. In His name, amen. 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 Love one another. We have some gifts.